Appointed by President Clinton as the 107th Justice to the U.S. Supreme Court in 1993, Justice Ginsburg continued to fight for the essential dignity and independence of all individuals, including women and minorities. Justice Ginsburg also positively impacted higher education when she wrote the court's majority opinion in the United States versus Virginia, a case that challenged the exclusion of women from the all-male, state-supported Virginia Military Institute. Writing in her typical graceful and eloquent prose, Justice Ginsburg said, this opinion does mark as presumptively invalid a law that denies to women equal opportunity to aspire to achieve, participate in, and contribute to society based on what they can do. The late conservative activist Phyllis Shafley was highly critical of the justice writing, and I quote, her radical feminist goals into the Constitution. Well, I for one want to thank Justice Ginsburg for those radical feminist goals. I could go on singing the praise of this ever graceful woman who on the strength of her integrity, legal acumen, humility, and unwavering commitment to the highest principles of our democracy and constitution has become a larger than life pop icon, affectionately known as the notorious RBG. <laughs> Justice Ginsburg, thank you for being here with us today. Thank you for all that you have done and will continue to do to make our nation more fair and just for everyone. It is with honor and pride that we welcome you as the newest member of the SUNY family. We will now confer the honorary degree. SUNY honorary degrees proposed by our campuses and approved by the State University Board of Trustees represent the highest form of rec recognition accorded by the State University of New York. These degrees are conferred upon individuals of exceptional distinction whose achievements and contributions serve as inspiring examples to university students, the university community, and the SUNY system more broadly. We are honored to have this opportunity to confer this degree on Justice Ginsburg. By the authority of the trustees and the chancellor of the State University of New York and the council and the faculty of the University of Buffalo, I now confer upon Ruth Bader Ginsburg the degree of Doctor of Laws, honoris causa, with all the rights and privileges thereto pertaining. In token thereof, I present this diploma and direct that she be vested with the hood appropriate to the degree. This, this occasion is both a joy and a sorrow for me. A joy because a bright and caring young man in the class below mine at Cornell University, Wayne Wisbaum, was both a strong supporter of the University of Buffalo and its law school and a prominent member of the Western New York legal community. A 
a sorrow because Wayne did not live to be with us today. In July 2018, Wayne wrote to me that his health disabled him from playing a lead role in the arrangements for my visit here, but he still hoped to attend all the events. He asked me to confirm that I would come to Buffalo in August 2019 in any event. I did so immediately, and I did not withdraw when my own health problems presented challenges. Wayne was the very best of lawyers, the least self-regarding, the most dedicated to the well-being of the people, organizations, and communities he served. Although he is no longer in our midst, we remember Wayne with affection and esteem for all the good he had done. It was beyond my wildest imagination that I would one day become the notorious RBG. <laughs> I am now 86 years old, yet people of all ages want to take their picture with me. <laughs> Amazing. If I am notorious, it is because I had the good fortune to be alive and a lawyer in the late 1960s, then and continuing through the 1970s, for the first time in history, it became possible to urge before courts successfully that equal justice under law requires all arms of government to regard women as persons equal in stature to men. In my college years, 1950 to 1954, it was widely thought that women were not suited to many of life's occupations, lawyering and bartending, military service, foreign service, driving trucks, piloting planes, policing, serving on juries, to take just a few of many examples that now seem utterly senseless. It was exhilarating to help bring down the barriers that, in Justice Brennan's words, put women less on a pedestal than in a cage. True, we have not reached nirvana, but the progress I have seen in my lifetime makes me optimistic for the future. Our communities, nation, and world will be increasingly improved as women achieve their rightful place in all fields of human endeavor. At a reception some years ago, a college student asked if I could help her. She and paper by asking diverse people to respond. What she asked did I think was a problem for the My mind raced past privacy concerns in the electronic age, terrorist threats, deadly weapons, partisan divisions in our legislature and polity. I thought of Thurgood Marshall's praise of the evolution of our Constitution's opening words. We the people those words came to embrace once excluded, ignored, or undervalued people, people held in human bondage, 
Native Americans, women, who own property. I thought next of our nation's pluribus unum of one. The challenge is to make or keep our communities places where we can tolerate, even celebrate our differences while pulling together for the common good of many one is the main aspiration. It is my hope for our country and world. With huge appreciation for the degree just awarded me, I am proud to be affiliated with the University of Buffalo and its law school. Thank you so very much.